Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvellous video. Hi everyone, and welcome to another marvellous video. We're all aware of one of the deadliest villains of the Marvel Universe, Apocalypse, and how his wrath can decimate the world in days. Be it in live-action films, animation, or comics, Apocalypse has always lived up to his name, taking his place as a godlike entity. In today's video, we plan to explore the apocalypses from the different alternate realities and how their lives were executed. Since the comics have their different iterations and versions, there was a wide variety of events associated with apocalypse in the different timelines. So hold your horses as we'll be diving into exploring every apocalypse variant in Marvel Universe. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Let's begin. Live Action Versions It was 1994 when 20th Century Fox obtained the rights to all the X-Men characters, following which were the list of movies under the X-Men banner. The chain of movies at one point seemed to have lost continuity, but was later stitched to form two alternate realities, Earth-10005 and Earth-TRN-414. Earth-10005 Earth-10005 was the main reality on which the live-action films were set before the days of future past events. In this reality, Ensabarner, aka Apocalypse, was classified as the first known existence of a mutant in Egypt. He was first showcased in the post credit scene of 2014's Days of the Future as a young mutant who used his telekinetic powers to build a pyramid in Egypt. The story moves on to the next X-Men movie, X-Men Apocalypse, where he's shown to be a pharaoh and later worshipped as a god by the Egyptians. Although Ensabarner Barner was an immensely powerful mutant, he wasn't immortal. Later, in 3600 BC, he'd grown old and was shown to be undergoing a ritual that would transfer his consciousness and powers to a new mutant body. The new mutant had enhanced healing abilities, which would also add to Ensa Barner's array of powers and abilities. Monitored by his four horsemen, Apocalypse was undergoing the procedure inside the pyramid. As his priest began the transfer, a few of his servants launched a coup. They released a giant slab along an inclined plane during the construction of the pyramid. The slab soon gained massive momentum and began wrecking the foundations of the pyramid. Finally, it destroyed the vital pillars within the structure, which led to its collapse. The horsemen executed the transferring procedure of Ensa Barner, but died in the destruction. However, one of the horsemen survived and sacrificed her life to protect Ensa Barner in his new body from getting crushed under the collapsing pyramid. The story of this reality continued with mutant kind living hidden from the rest of the world and the rise of the Hellfire Club led by Sebastian. It was shown in 2011's X-Men First Class and also in how Charles Xavier and Eric Lencher teamed up to defeat Shaw and his team of mutants. At the end of the film, the world was completely aware of the existence of the mutants. In 1970, scientist and businessman Bolivar Trask, driven by the belief that somehow mutants would cause humans to go extinct, began working on the Sentinel program. Government officials were unsure of his program until Mystique assassinated Trask for his ruthless experiments on mutants. They also managed to obtain Mystique, using which an advanced set of Sentinels were created to eradicate mutants. Soon, in a chain of events, the entire mutant race, along with humans who sympathized with them, were captured and killed. Only a handful of them were alive and, as shown in the X-Men Days of Future Past, managed to send Wolverine back in time to stop Mystique from killing Trask with the help of Kitty. After facing several crises, they were successful in averting the danger, and this led to the creation of the new alternate reality, Earth TRN. 414. The version of Ensa Barner, or Apocalypse, showcased an Earth-10005, survived for several centuries with the aid of the essence transferal ritual. It not only allowed him to live for several lifetimes, but also gave him new mutant powers, as his consciousness and powers were transferred into new mutants. The latest body to which he was transferred had enhanced healing abilities, which were then one of his new powers. Apocalypse possessed telekinesis, using which he built an entire pyramid. If strictly followed by the timeline, there wasn't much of this version of Apocalypse, and all that was shown in the movie X-Men Apocalypse was of the version from the new altered timeline. Earth TRN 414 The events of this reality were more or less similar to those of Earth 10005, except that Trask's murder at the hands of Mystique was inhibited, leading to a world with no threat of the Sentinel's program going online. In this reality, when the existence of mutants was revealed by the world sometime around the 1980s, there was an unspoken hostility growing between humans and mutants. Some began fearing them, while others formed cults in response to these mutants. One such cult discovered the existence of the mutant Ensa Barner and began excavating the site where his body remained buried. Since the events of this timeline were the same as Earth-10005, before the events of Trask being saved, 
Ensabano was buried alive under the destroyed pyramid. When he woke up to the new world, he was disgusted by how no one recognized him and also by how many humans were no longer his servants. Roaming across the streets of Cairo, he spotted Aurora Monroe, a mutant with the capability of controlling the weather. Apocalypse couldn't withstand watching a mutant suffer, and before the medicine she stole could kill her, he intervened and killed each and every one of them. Aurora took Apocalypse to her shelter, where he happened to see a television and was deeply disturbed by the sight of the world deteriorating for mutants while he'd been in slumber. He also watched a video clip of Magneto's assault on Trask and his Sentinels. Apocalypse decided to cleanse the world and reclaim the place of the mutants, and he boosted Aurora's powers to make her his first horseman. Aurora next took Apocalypse to Caliban, a mutant with the ability to locate other mutants, where he chose his next horseman, Psylocke, and boosted her powers. His third horseman was Angel, whose crippled wings were replaced by sharp metallic ones. The next mutant was Eric Lenshire, who had just lost his family after trying to live a normal life in disguise. Apocalypse surged Magneto's power to such levels that he could manipulate every dust of metal in the Earth's crust. Charles tried communicating with Eric via the Cerebro, and while they were having a bit of a debate, Apocalypse sensed his presence and retraced back to control his mind. He next used him to control army personnel to launch all nuclear missiles in the world into outer space. Havoc lasers destroy the entire Cerebro to destroy the link Apocalypse created with Charles, but it's too late, as he's already spotted their location. As an unconscious Charles was carried in his wheelchair, Apocalypse and his four horsemen arrived and took Charles with them. Havoc tried shooting his lasers at them, but they managed to teleport away, leading to Havoc's beams triggering a massive explosion. Next was the iconic scene of Quicksilver saving everyone except Havoc, who was closest to the explosion. As Apocalypse brought Charles to a mountain, his plans with him were revealed. He wanted to acquire the psychic abilities of Charles, and hence wanted to conduct the essence transfer ritual to move into his body. Together with Magneto, Apocalypse rebuilt his pyramid and began destroying human civilization. The X-Men arrived to save their professor and barely managed to free him before the transfer could be completed. He still had a connection with Charles's psyche. But thanks to Jean, but thanks to Jean, he was saved. Apocalypse was finally defeated after Storm switched sides, watching her idol, Mystique, fight Apocalypse while Magneto prioritized his attachment to Charles and the X-Men. Among the powers Apocalypse showcased were his superhuman strength and durability. Long ago, his consciousness was transferred into a mutant with enhanced healing abilities, and it seemed to be as good as Wolverine's. When Mystique slit his throat, he recovered instantaneously. His telekinesis was slightly less than matter manipulation, and it showcased how he turned objects into dust and vice versa without any effort. Apocalypse had decent telepathic abilities and, needless to say, the ability to augment the powers of other mutants. He could create strong barriers around him and also teleport to any location he wished to. Animated versions. Earth 8096. Earth 1896 was the timeline showcased in different animated series. There was the Wolverine and the X-Men, the Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Hulk vs. Thor, Hulk vs. Wolverine, Thor, Tales of Asgard, Marvel Universe, Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Volume 2. Apocalypse had a brief appearance in this reality, and it was in Wolverine and the X-Men Season 1, Episode 23, titled Shades of Grey, written by Joshua Fine. Greg Johnson and Craig Kyle, the episode mainly revolved around Mr. Sinister's plans to extract Scott and Jean's DNA to create the ultimate power mutant. Controlling Archangel, he succeeded in extracting it, but before Archangel could kill, Jean, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Forge, and Emma arrived and fought the Marauders, Vertigo, Blockbuster, and Arclight. They were finally subdued after Jean unleashed the Phoenix Force Insider. Archangel and Sinister managed to escape, following which Sinister reported to his master with the DNA samples. It was the apocalypse, and it was all part of his plan. This was the only appearance of Ensa Barner, and his powers were mentioned to be similar to his version from Earth-616. Earth 11052. On November 4th, 2000, the X-Men Evolution animated series was released, and although it was initially referred to as Earth 3110, the official handbook of the Marvel Universe A to Z issue 4 designated it as Earth 11052. This reality's Ensa Barner, aka Apocalypse, was introduced in Season 3, Episode 12, titled Dark Horizon Part 2. Born in Egypt over 5,000 years ago, he was abandoned due to his grey skin and appearance. Baal, the leader of a band of raiders and scavengers known as the Sandstormers, found him and adopted him. Ensa Barner's powers were unparalleled with growing age, and he took the name Apocalypse. Sometime later, he discovered a time-traveling device known as the Eye of Ages that Rama Tut left. While activating the machine, Apocalypse was weakened, and his high priest, believing his growing power could be dangerous, imprisoned him inside the machine and left it at the top of the Himalayan mountains. Many centuries later, Apocalypse managed to connect telepathically with the hypnotist Mesmero, who hypnotized Jean Grey, Evan Daniels, Nightcrawler, and Shadowcat to steal the three rings that could unlock one of the doors of Apocalypse's imprisonment. Mesmero proceeded to open the final door with the aid of Rogue and Mystique. 
The X-Men and Magneto's Brotherhood of Mutants made their bet to stop Mesmero, but were too late as Apocalypse was finally unleashed. When Apocalypse awakened, he defeated everyone in an instant and enslaved Magneto, Professor X, Storm, and Mystique to serve as his horsemen. His master plan was to uncover the pyramids in China, Mexico, and Egypt that would relay the Eye of Ages mutation effect throughout the globe. Believing their professor to have died along with Magneto, Storm, and Mystique, the remaining X-Men and their allies began preparing for war against the Apocalypse. The Shield also extended their support by sending their modified sentinels to fight alongside them. At the end of the fight, Rogue stopped Apocalypse by using the new mutant disabling power she absorbed from Leech. The Apocalypse was defeated and trapped back inside the Eye of Ages. Storm, Mystique, Professor X, and Magneto were saved, and Wolverine sent Apocalypse through time using Ramatut's machine. The Apocalypse wasn't dead, but his destination was unknown. Appearing in five episodes, Apocalypse showcased powers and abilities similar to what we know of his Earth-616 counterpart. These were his Superman strengths, reflexes, durability, longevity, shape-shifting, and size alteration. He also possessed telekinesis and telepathy. Earth-13393 The reality of Earth-13393 was showcased in X-Men, the animated series Season 2, Episodes 7 and 8, where Apocalypse was the sole ruler of the world. It was an alternate timeline showcased in the series where Apocalypse ruled the world and was opposed by Clan Chosen, led by Cable. Apocalypse soon realized that there was no end to the opposition until he changed the entire reality. He next stole Cable's computer and used it to travel to the axis of time, in Limbo, where he studied for centuries to track down the mutants who would help him reach his goal. He began stealing various psychics from Earth-92131, but was opposed by the X-Men, Cable, and Bishop. Magneto and Mystique initially allied with him, but later turned against him because of his motives. Once the psychics were free, X-Men and the rest used their combined powers to subdue Apocalypse and send him into the time stream. It was in Season 4, Episode 11, where he died after the rejuvenation chamber in the Pyramid was destroyed. Earth-92131 The reality of Earth-92131 was first showcased in 1992's X-Men The Animated Series Season 1, Episode 1, and has been one of the most complicated and confusing timelines. There were comics based on the same reality, numerous incursions, and parallel dystopian futures created by time travelers Bishop and Cable. Apocalypse was introduced to this reality in X-Men The Animated Series Season 1, Episode 9, released on February 20th, 1993. There wasn't much about his origins except that he was an ancient mutant from the era of 12 100 BC, who caused an unfathomable amount of destruction to achieve his goal of enslaving mankind. He had his four horsemen and wielded advanced technology, including a restorative hibernation device that granted him immortality. He had to hibernate every 100 years within the device, which rejuvenated him. In the modern era, when Apocalypse emerged, he first encountered Mystique and convinced her to become his loyal servant. Beneath Stonehenge, he'd built a machine that could seize control of any individual's mind, following which Mystique, disguised as Dr. Gottfried Adler, announced this machine to be a cure for mutant Mutants throughout the globe who, despite their abilities, wanted to lead a normal life arrived and instead became slaves of the apocalypse. One of them was Warren Worthington III, aka Angel, who became one of his horsemen, following Autumn Rolfson, Abraham Kiros, and Plague as the other three. The horsemen were tasked with creating chaos and purging the earth of humanity, but thanks to the X-Men, the plans were foiled. Rogue managed to use her powers to render Archangel's conditioning undone and join their side. Later, Mystique was tasked with assassinating Senator Kelly in hopes of unsettling the world, but this time, it was time-traveling Bishop who inhibited the happening. However, that was not the end of the apocalypse, as he soon began orchestrating his new plans. Disguising himself as a human scientist, he joined hands with Graydon Creed with his friends of humanity, who collectively hated mutants. Together, they devised a virus that would be harmless to humans, but lethal to mutants. Apocalypse double-crossed them by modifying the virus in such a way that after it affected a mutant, it would mutate and become deadly for mutants and humans alike. He wanted to destroy both humans and mutants. Time-traveling Bishop arrived to warn the X-Men once again, but this time it was Cable from the future who solved the problem. Cable was from the alternate reality of Earth-13393, where in the future, the virus created by Apocalypse had subdued humans and mutants and became their sole ruler. They'd also found a cure for the plague, and Cable's time-traveling was only to help the X-Men and nip the plague in the bud. He kidnapped Wolverine and made sure he was the first mutant to be infected with the virus. Wolverine's healing abilities fought off the virus and created antibodies necessary to find the cure for the virus. All this while Archangel was burning in his desire for revenge against the Apocalypse and spent time finding a weakness in the immortal mutant. The weakness was, in fact, a ruse set up by Apocalypse to lure him and the rest of the X-Men into a trap. When the entire plan was a failure, the X-Men discovered Apocalypse's advanced spaceship and tried trapping him inside a force field that could render all his powers useless. 
useless. The trap was a success, but he managed to manipulate Archangel to release him and claim his vengeance. The apocalypse nearly killed everyone before everyone managed to get back into the force field. They next launched him into deep space, knowing that someday he'd return. Apocalypse did survive, and he made an alliance with Shi'ar Princess Deathbird, promising to kill her sister and acquire the throne for her. Can never be defeated. Let's terminate the uh one two one one nine three. The reality of Earth one two one one nine three was more like a historically detailed counterpart of Earth nine two one three one until Bishop arrived from the future to prevent the plague started by Apocalypse. This version of Apocalypse was introduced in X Men: The Animated Series season two, episode seven. It was little about his past or origins, and his story began with him orchestrating his plans, disguising himself as a scientist and member of Friends of Humanity, and using the Graydon Creed. Bishop's efforts did stop the spread of the virus, but at the cost of his life, at the hands of the Apocalypse. Earth TRN 680, showcased in Wolverine and the X-Men Season 1, Episode 26, released on November 29, 2009, is Earth TRN 680, known as the Age of Apocalypse. This alternate timeline was after the days of future past event was averted by the actions of the X-Men from the past. However, it led to the events that led to the rise of the Apocalypse. After the X-Men were successful in preventing the happenings of the days of future past event, Charles Xavier informed the X-Men in the past that Apocalypse would rise and take control over the world with his four horsemen, amongst whom would be Cyclops and Mr. Sinister. Apart from this, there wasn't much of an apocalypse in this timeline. Comic versions. Apocalypse had a prominent role in the comics and, needless to say, had numerous appearances. The comics were from different writers and showcased different realities. Earth 616. Ensabar Ner, which translates to the Seven Lights, was an ancient mutant warrior and the first of the second generation of mutants. Born in Egypt thousands of years ago, he was abandoned by his parents due to his monstrous appearance. He was later raised by a nomadic warrior. He was then later forced into slavery, but when his true powers kicked in, he overthrew his master and remained undefeated. He conquered all that stood in his way and championed the philosophy of survival of the fittest. At some point, he was recruited by the Celestials, making him the new guardian with the duty to ensure the natural course of evolution. The Celestials also enhanced his form, boosting his powers to a godlike level. Apocalypse eventually came to be worshipped as a god as he enforced his rule with his horsemen. He lived for several lifetimes with the aid of transferring his essence into new host bodies and also manifesting their powers. During his slumber, his descendants, known as the clan Akabar, guided the world according to his philosophy. Apocalypse faced numerous foes, including Dracula, X-Men, etc., and through his different life cycles, he recruited different horsemen to serve him. When the mutant nation of Krakoa was formed, he was asked to join the ruling body of the nation known as the Quiet Council. Apocalypse's wide range of powers primarily included superhuman strength and durability. It was to such a great extent that he survived screams from Black Bolt and the combined attacks of the X-Factor and the Inhumans. Apocalypse's original body was immortal, even before the Celestials enhanced it. He could never be permanently killed and could self-resurrect himself. Apocalypse had control over the atomic structure of his own body and could perform biomorphy, regeneration, and self-power bestowal. He could also manipulate matter and disintegrate objects with the touch of his finger. Next, we come to his telekinesis and psionic manipulation. He could not only control minds, but also cybernetics and machines. When attacked, Apocalypse could create nearly impenetrable force fields for its defense and deliver powerful energy blasts. He could absorb energy and also transfer it at will. Apocalypse could also teleport himself to places he wanted to. Earth 295. Introduced in 1995 X-Men Volume 2, Issue 40, the reality of Earth 295, also known as the Age of Apocalypse, was an alternate timeline created by Legion, the son of Charles Xavier, after he traveled back in time and caused the death of his father. Legion's objective was to kill Magneto and bring success to his father's dream of having perfect mutant human harmony. The X-Men tried to stop him, leading to Charles' death, which even erased his existence from reality. Interestingly, Magneto led the X-Men down the path showcased by Charles Xavier. Their struggle inspired Apocalypse to begin his conquest way before his mainstream counterpart. He also had a son named Nemesis. His first target was Cape Citadel, where he sent his four horsemen, Sabretooth, Kandra, Gideon, War, and Death, to attack and take control of the nuclear weapons. However, his plans were failed after the X-Men, led by Magneto, arrived and defeated the horsemen. In retaliation, Apocalypse sent his own son, Nemesis, to destroy Magneto's school and kill his daughter, Wanda. Apocalypse next recruits four new horsemen, consisting of his son, Sinister, Abyss, and Mikhail Rasputin. They managed to take control of New York and then decimated much of Japan. When an injured Apocalypse was nursed on the moon by his allies, the Inhumans, Magneto and his team followed him there to kill him. They failed 
and Apocalypse were sent back to Earth. When the Human High Council in Europe planned to destroy North America, the Apocalypse constructed a sea wall defense grid. He agreed to sign the Kelly Pact, according to which he'd stop the genetic culling of humans, but he later denied it and continued his genocide. Magneto and a time-displaced bishop joined hands and split into two teams to rescue as many humans as they could, while also finding ways of saving the fractured timeline. Thanks to his minion, Rex, Apocalypse located the ruins of the Xavier Mansion, which was then the X-Men headquarters. He also found out that Nightcrawler was teleporting to the human mutant sanctuary to rescue everyone, and for his pale riders to follow him and eliminate everyone. Meanwhile, Weapon X and Jean Grey attack one of the sea wall defenses that Apocalypse had built to assist the Sentinel in evacuating as many humans as possible. In response, Apocalypse sent Magma to eliminate the Human High Council, which failed and led to their initiating the nuclear attack. Shadow King informed simultaneous Apocalypse about the existence of the ultra-powerful mutant X-Man that had been engineered by Sinister to destroy him, and he made no delays in sending Domino to find, recruit, or kill the new mutant. Apocalypse next attacked the X-Men headquarters and defeated Bishop and Magneto easily. It was the Bishop who informed them of the location of the Sanctuary, following which each X-Men left for the rescue missions. Apocalypse next sent Bishop to Quebec to have his mind probed by the Shadow King and took Magneto to his citadel to torture. Despite the success, his plans were failing overall. Most of his forces were either defeated or switched to Magneto's side. Bishop was also saved by the X-Men. When they arrived to save Magneto, they were all caught up in a trap set by Magneto. Magneto witnessed his loved one struggling against Apocalypse, who was trying to kill Magneto before them. X-Men arrived and stopped Apocalypse, and he fled the scene. In the final confrontation, Magneto unleashed his ultimate rage and ripped Apocalypse in half, thereby killing him instantly. The long battle for saving the world was over, and Bishop traveled back in time to stop Legion from making his attempt to kill Magneto. Earth 691. In the Marvel Universe, there were numerous interplanetary wars, the first being in 1907 in the mainstream universe. Similarly, in Earth 691, there was the War of Worlds, but the first one was in 1901. It was the Martians who overwhelmed humans with their technology and strength. However, they died after arriving on Earth owing to the terrestrial bacteria. Following another attempt at invasion sometime around 1917, humans began facing tremendous economic depression. The cost of living was unbearable, and Western civilization began deteriorating rapidly. In response, governments and leaders across the world chose to increase mass production at cheap rates and built a large number of factories powered by nuclear fission plants. All these caused a drastic effect on the environment, and it began to degrade. Aerosol industry soared high up in the market, and the increased amount of released CFC caused the Earth's ozone layer to break down completely. The harmful ultraviolet rays began showing their effect, but were left unnoticed until the first skin cancer epidemic in 1982. It was alarming, and people were bound to use protective clothing to expose themselves to the sunlight. The point of the divergence between Earth-616 and Earth-691 was that the Martians later occupied 691 and caused a chain of catastrophic events that damaged the world tremendously. Tremendously. The anti-mutant bacteria of 1999 brought great suffering to mutants as sentinels began decimating them ruthlessly. In order to escape, Magneto and his team of mutants known as the Exiles planned to abandon Earth. This was when the Apocalypse was introduced. As shown in Guardians of the Galaxy issue 9, released in December 1990, Apocalypse tried to thwart their escape from Earth. He believed in his idea of survival of the fittest and wanted the mutants to stay back and fight instead of leaving. Magneto engaged Apocalypse while the other mutants managed to board the spaceship. Both Magneto and Apocalypse died Died, allowing the mutants to escape without injury. Earth 928. Earth 928, also depicted as Spider-Verse, was introduced in Spider-Man 2099, Issue 1, released in September 1992, and it showcased a dystopian future where a massive civil war between humans and mutants consumed the world. The humans won the battle but suffered tremendous losses, while the mutants survived owing to the efforts of Master Zhao's X-Men and Mama Hurricane's Muse Mutant Underground Support Engine. Ensabar Nur of this reality was shown in X-Men 2099, Issue 30, released in January 1996. It was a brief glimpse shown by Doctor Doom to Shakti Haddad, aka Cerebra, the founding member of the X-Men in reality. Earth 957. In the Earth 616 timeline, there was the Phalanx Covenant, an event in which two archenemies of the X-Men, Stephen Lang and Cameron Hodge, initiated the techno-organic Phalanx to capture and assimilate the powers of the mutants. One of the mutants, Clarice Ferguson, aka Blink, cut up one of the Phalanx entities known as Harvest during the confrontation and seemingly died in the process. The What If, Volume 1, Issue 75, showcased a reality in which Blink survived while confronting Harvest and gained the powers of the Inbetweener. This was the reality of Earth 957 and while Blink was inside the Inbetweener's realm, there was a short glimpse of the apocalypse. Earth 1100 Earth 1100 was the home universe of John Proudstar, the Apache mutant known as Thunderbird. It was showcased in Exiles Volume 1, Issue 1 
released in 2001. The issue began with Blink of Earth 295 being transported to a strange desert following her ordeal in Apocalypse's castle. She found a group of mutants whom she had never met before. A strange man known as the Time Broker emerged and stated that all these mutants were unstuck in time. He began narrating the story behind each mutant, and that was when we got to see the reality of Earth 1100 and its version of the Apocalypse. It was about Thunderbird, a mutant picked by Charles Xavier for the second generation of mutants. He was then captured by the Apocalypse, who enhanced him and made him his horseman named War. However, John managed to free himself from Apocalypse's control and later rejoined the X-Men. There wasn't much shown of the Apocalypse, and his powers were seemingly like those of his counterpart from Earth 616. Earth 1298. Also known as the Mutant X-Verse, the reality of Earth 1298 and its version of Apocalypse were showcased in 1998's Mutant X Volume 1, Issue 1. Earth 1298 was similar to Earth 616, except that it had a few critical altercations that rendered the world an unhappy place. It all began after Havoc of Earth 616 woke up in the body of his Earth 1298 counterpart. He was married to a mutant named Madeline Pryor, who was a replacement for Jean Grey in the X-Men. They also had a child named Scotty, whom they named after Havoc's deceased brother, Scott, who had died in the same crash that killed their parents. Among several other variations of this reality, the glimpse of the apocalypse was shown to be associated with the story of Warren Worthington III, who was converted to one of his horsemen. The event left him deeply scarred, and he finally lost his inner conflict between good and evil. Warren took on the name Fallen and became a twisted character. Apocalypse was not shown any further. Earth 1610. Earth 1298, also known as the Ultimate Universe, was showcased in 2000's Ultimate Spider-Man Issue 1. Apocalypse was introduced in Ultimate X-Men Issue 49, and his origin story was left unclear throughout. According to Cable, he was the first mutant and had lived across eons. His coming was in the 21st century, all thanks to Mr. Sinister. Sinister was a scientist working at Oscor and developed acute schizophrenia after experimentation with a super soldier serum made by him. He believed he was working for Apocalypse, whose presence was not yet shown. Convenient inferred that Sinister woke him. At Apocalypse's commands, Sinister killed many mutants and is believed to be doing so to make Apocalypse manifest. Sinister's actions brought attention from the X-Men, and when he failed to kill the team's junior members, he was shown to be imprisoned in the Triskelion by Apocalypse. Apocalypse ordered him to choke himself to death. Sometime later, Sinister was found to have committed suicide, but he later returned to life to herald the arrival of Apocalypse. It wasn't shown how it happened, though. He completed his task of killing ten mutants, including Angel. Finally, a wounded Sinister rose into the air and transformed into Apocalypse. When the X-Men arrived at the scene and attacked him, he proved to be far more dangerous than they could predict, as he was able to take on their abilities easily. Wolverine was gravely injured after Apocalypse tore off one of his arms. The Morlocks arrived as well, and Apocalypse made them unwittingly fight the X-Men. Next in line was a contingent of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents whose attacks on Apocalypse altered him into a cyborg-like form. This, however, made him stronger. Charles Xavier and Cable from Earth-2107 arrived and joined the fight, along with the Fantastic Four. Apocalypse single-handedly fended off all their attacks, and when Charles Xavier used his telepathic powers on him, he managed to reverse it on him. Apocalypse was prepared to kill Charles, and that was when Jean Grey unleashed the Phoenix Force. This was the point where the tables turned. Although Apocalypse was confident in taking her down as well, the Phoenix Phoenix Force overpowered him easily and destroyed Apocalypse, leaving Sinister behind. This version of Apocalypse had a wide range of new powers and abilities. Along with superhuman strength and durability, he could absorb the powers of other mutants and make them a part of his. When he did the same with Wolverine, he immediately acquired his regenerative healing factor. He could also shapeshift, as during the battle, his appearance altered when needed. Apocalypse could maintain a psychic defense while engaging in physical confrontation. Earth 2107. The reality of Earth 2107 was similar to that of Earth 1610, except for the fact that in the former, Apocalypse was not defeated and he conquered the world. When the X-Men attempted to stop him, he killed Charles Xavier and eventually conquered the world. Wolverine's left arm was ripped off along with his right eye, and he eventually took the alias Cable. Only a handful of mutants were left, including Bishop and the Six Pack, who continued their struggle against him. Eventually, Cable traveled to Earth 1610, abducted Charles and brought him back to his own timeline. Charles's damaged spine was healed with the help of advanced technology, and they spent the next year preparing for battle against Apocalypse. Earth 2017 was more like a dystopian future of Earth 1610, and both versions of Apocalypse had the same set of powers and abilities. Earth 2182 Earth 2182 was showcased when the Time Broker met Blink and began showcasing the timelines of the mutants unknown to her. Earth 2182 was the home reality of Talia Wagner, aka Nocturne. It seemed to be 20 years ahead of Earth 616, where Nightcrawler was the field leader of the X-Men, while Wolverine played the role of Charles Xavier. Among several other altercations from the main timeline, there was the story of Apocalypse showcased in Exiles issue number 41. In this reality, he had a son named Armageddon, and was artificially created with the DNA sample of Jean Grey along with his own. However, ironically, Armageddon rejected his father's path and joined the X-Men. Together with the X-Men, Armageddon defeated Apocalypse. 
Earth 2301. The reality of Earth 2301, also known as the Mangaverse, was introduced in 2002's Marvel Mangaverse New Dawn, Issue 1. The Ensa Barneur of this reality was introduced in Marvel Mangaverse Avengers Assemble Issue 1 as the ultimate dealer of evil with the objective of cleaning the weak from the world. The Avengers fought him on numerous occasions, but couldn't end his wrath. Stark had built several robots to counter him, but kept it a secret as he feared Apocalypse taking control over them and wreaked havoc. However, he was compelled to dispatch them when Hulk, who was a giant monster in reality, broke loose. Apocalypse soon became aware of the robots and sent his horsemen to retrieve them from Stark's secret mountain base in China. The horsemen failed as the Avengers arrived to fight them off, but it wasn't over as Apocalypse soon arrived in person from Egypt to fight. The Avengers struggled to give him any damage. Apocalypse was about to declare his victory. However, as a final attempt, Stark combined all the vehicles of the Avengers to form the ultimate Iron Man, a robot as tall as hundreds of feet and defeated Apocalypse. Apocalypse. This version of Ensabar Nur had the ability to absorb and integrate machines as a part of his own and use its powers. He could increase and decrease his size at will and could fire energy blasts from his palm. These were called the Apocalypse Beams. Earth 2988 Ensabar Nur of Earth 2988 made a brief appearance in What If Issue 111. The reality showcased the possibility that Wolverine would become one of Apocalypse's horsemen. Genesis successfully bonded adamantium to Wolverine's skeleton and served him as a gift to Apocalypse. However, things didn't turn out as expected. Wolverine turned against Apocalypse and killed him, following which he went on a violent rampage, killing all supervillains in the world. Earth 4935. Introduced in 1994's Adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix issue number 2, this version of Apocalypse depicted a future version of the modern era in around the late 36th century. In this future, he'd conquered most of North America, subduing or killing everyone who opposed him. The only opposition was the hope and belief of the mutants who battled en Sabarner in the modern era under the order of the Witnesses. At some point, he had a daughter named Diamanda Nero, who was made a High Counselor and Viceroy, but she held most of her father's power after he began burning through host bodies faster and faster. While the festival of the resurrection of Apocalypse took place, Rachel Summers arrived in the disguise of Alizern Somerset and fought the army of Prelates and Diamanda. The event got her a bunch of followers under the name Clan Ascani, meaning family of outsiders. The clan opposed the rule of Apocalypse, and when he sent his daughter to fight the clan in the Order of the Witnesses, she was left depowered by Rachel. The followers of Clan Ascani began gaining belief that Apocalypse would be taken down and prophesied Ascani's son to be their messiah. 3,000 years ago, Apocalypse infected infant Nathan Summers with a techno-organic virus that was incurable. Sister Ascani traveled back in time to rescue Nathan and bring him to the future to cure him. He was believed to be Ascani's son prophesied to end Apocalypse and his terror. Once she brought him to the future, she made a clone of him in case the real one didn't survive. When Apocalypse learned about the arrival of Nathan, he sent his army of Canaanites to massacre the Ascani. Several Ascani died, but they managed to secure the real Nathan, leaving the clone behind. When Apocalypse arrived and found the clone, he believed it to be the real Nathan Summers and stopped his hunt for the child. Apocalypse sought to raise the child and later transfer his essence into him. Meanwhile, Jean and Scott's consciousness was transferred to the future into the new body clones of their descendants, Red Dayspring and Slim Dayspring. Years later, while transferring his essence, Apocalypse realized that Strife was a clone and didn't possess the ability to maintain his essence. However, he decided to go through with the transfer and wait until he found a new body, but Strife kept resisting mentally. Soon arrived Slim, Red and Nathan Dayspring, and while destroying the psychic link between Strife and Apocalypse, Nathan killed Apocalypse. Earth 5701 Also known as the Age of Apocalypse, this version of Apocalypse and Timeline was showcased in 2005's Cable and Deadpool issue 15. In the brief appearance of Apocalypse, he was shown to be converting the Cable of this timeline into one of his horsemen war. He soon ascended into power and killed millions with the aid of his horsemen. Out of all places, New York was shown to be suffering catastrophic damage. With the Statue of Liberty falling, a multi-story statue of Apocalypse was established, and it stood tall along with an obelisk tower hundreds of feet above the ruined skyscrapers of Manhattan. Earth 8410 Earth 8410 was an alternate reality depicting the period when Machine Man woke up to battle Banetronics. The reality was introduced in Machine Man Volume 2, Issue 1, and an indirect appearance of Apocalypse was teased in Wild Thing, Issue 6. Mysterio Quentin Beck created a virtual reality consisting of multiple villains and unleashed Sinister Six and Hobgoblin on VR addict Nicky Doyle. One of the villains showcased in reality was Ensa Barner. Earth 9112. What if issue 32 revolved around the story of Jean Grey on Earth 9112, where she willfully managed to get rid of her powers? She returned to her normal life and served as a teacher at the Xavier Institute. She was once taken by Magneto to Asteroid M and offered to get back her powers, but she denied it, only to be later assassinated by Mastermind. As events turned, her soul was showcased to be, in fact, Phoenix, and given the choice to merge with Jean and bring her back. She agreed, and Jean was back. She was engulfed by the Dark Phoenix Force, which eventually brought in chaos. The Apocalypse 
apocalypse of this reality was shown in issue 33 as one of the great threats to the X-Men, like that of Earth-616. Earth-9921 Earth-9921 was the alternate reality where Gambit never met the Thieves' Guild, and hence never became as powerful as we know him to be. However, he joined the X-Men and prohibited the manifestation of the Dark Phoenix in the universe. He took the name New Sun and later began operating solo. Apocalypse was one of the villains in reality who got wiped out after the New Sun unleashed the energy contained within him. Earth-10082 This version of Apocalypse was introduced in Avengers Vol. 4, Issue 2, released in June 2010. He was drawn into the reality of Earth-616 out of his proper place in the time stream during the Kang vs. Ultron War. He first arrived in New York during the Heroic Age and battled with the Avengers. His horsemen were Scarlet Witch, Spider-Man, Red Hulk, and Wolverine. After a brief battle, Apocalypse and his horsemen were redirected into the time stream and teleported somewhere else. Earth-10197 Earth-10197 was the alternate reality showcased in What If Issue 101, which mainly focused on Archangel. The story of Apocalypse was nearly the same as that of Earth-616, where he tried converting Angel into one of his horsemen. After converting him into his horseman of death, when Apocalypse went inside his rejuvenation chamber, Archangel grew vicious slowly into a murderous frenzy. He killed several elites of Apocalypse, and when the latter came out of his chamber and proceeded to chastise Archangel, he replied that he just followed his path of eradicating the weak. Earth-16558 Earth-16558 was showcased in Extraordinary X-Men, Issue 8, released in March 2016. In this reality, after Apocalypse resurfaced in the 21st century, the entire world was destroyed. With his end game, The Great Trials, he nearly wipes out all civilizations except the Wakandas, the Stark Self, the Atlanteans, the Mystics, the Inhumans, the Atlanteans, and the Moloids. They all lived under the rule of Apocalypse, who transformed the world as a part of his body known as the Omega World. His horsemen, Deadpool, the Venom Symbiote, and Moon Knight, and the Man-Thing served as antibodies that cleansed the Omega world of anything that could bring him any harm. Sometime later, Colossus and his team of young mutants arrived in the Omega world from the past. They were teleported to the timeline accidentally via Sugar Man's time machine. Their arrival was soon noticed by the horsemen, and they attacked them. But Colossus managed to hold them off for the other mutants to escape. He was subdued and later converted into one of the horsemen. The team of young mutants had acquired the Ark containing 600 mutant embryos, and Apocalypse ordered his horsemen to retrieve it. The mutants kept changing their location strategically and evaded the horsemen for over a year before Storm and the rest of the X-Men arrived for rescue. The young mutants were hiding in the Moloid's territory, and as a coincidence, Storm's team and the horsemen found them simultaneously. The Ark was retrieved by the horsemen, following which Apocalypse destroyed it and a war broke out between them and the X-Men. Storm faced Apocalypse head-on while the rest of the mutants fought the horsemen. It was Nightcrawler who stabbed Apocalypse in the back and left him severely injured. With his injury, the Omega world began crumbling. The X-Men, however, saved Apocalypse by taking him to the past, away from the crumbling Omega world and forcing him to free Colossus from his control. However, Apocalypse sent Colossus to Clan Akabar. Following this, Apocalypse was imprisoned in a special cell known as X-Haven, created by Forge, who worked on finding a cure for Apocalypse. Sometime later, during the attack of the World Eater, Nightcrawler made a deal with Apocalypse to free him in exchange for reverting Colossus to normal. However, he later threw Apocalypse into the vortex created by the World Eater to consume Limbo, thereby killing him. Earth-21993 As shown in 1992's What If issue 46, Earth-21993 was the alternate reality where things diverged from that of Earth-616 after Charles returned from the Skrull imprisonment. The world was in utter chaos with a completely destroyed human-mutant relationship. His X-Men were also dismantled with havoc brainwashed, Colossus and Dazzler suffering from amnesia, the Shadow King in control of Muir Island, and a mutant terrorist group known as the Mutant Liberation Front terrorizing the world. To make things worse, Charles Xavier was killed by Cable, and soon a bunch of other X-Men villains emerged to capitalize on the situation. Apocalypse was one of them who, with his Dark Riders, targeted the Scarlet Witch. Apocalypse was confronted by the Avengers, but the outcome of the battle was not disclosed. Earth-32098 Earth-32098 was one of the ages of Apocalypse, spawned by Apocalypse after using the power he stole from the Twelve. It was showcased in X-Men Volume 2, Issue 98, released in January 2000. Apocalypse had no idea what he'd become, as he was then far superior to what he was. Most of him existed outside the barriers of time, and he ended up creating alternate realities. He tricked Magneto and the founding member of the Universal X Alliance, and used their powers to reach as far as the beginning of their lives. This, however, ended up creating a world without the X-Men. Unknown to him, Scott's consciousness was still inside his body, and he reversed the power conduit to return the bioenergies to his fellow X-Men. His stolen powers were exhausting, and thanks to Cyclops, his plans were sabotaged. All of the realities converged back to Egypt in their time period, and just as Cable was about to execute Apocalypse, he escaped. 
Earth 51518. Ensabar Nur of Earth 51518 was introduced in 2015's Secret Wars issue 2. In this reality, mutants had triumphed over humans and resided in the domain of Apocalypse, where Ensabar Nur was the Baron. Years later, Apocalypse began expanding his domain by waging war on neighboring domains and conquering them. The Barons of the conquered domains were converted into his horsemen. His worst enemies were the mutant reels known as the X-Men. Meanwhile, the humans living in his domain secretly developed the legacy virus that could eradicate all mutants. It was conspired by the friends of humanity, and Apocalypse made no delays in dispatching his elite forces to attack them. The X-Men intervened, but later, when they learned about the virus, it became a concern for them as well. The X-Men tried taking it away, and Apocalypse personally intervened in the matter. All the chaos led to the canister holding the virus breaking and unleashing it on its surroundings. However, Apocalypse sought this to be a means of filtering the weak from the strong, as he believed in the survival of the fittest. The news of mutants growing weak spread, and while Apocalypse carried on with his observation, he himself was infected with the virus. Soon, things turned against him as the horsemen, following his ideals, considered him weak and unworthy. They turned against Apocalypse, and while the X-Men came to resist, the virus and the fight were enough to bring about the demise of Apocalypse. Owing to the virus, his capability of cellular cohesion was destroyed, and he slowly disintegrated into a liquid. However, this was not the end of him. After the rebellion against Doom at Battleworld, the events that led to the death of Apocalypse were undone, and he was brought back to life. He joined forces with Doom and worked with Baron Sinister, Maestro, and Prior to subdue the rebellion. The tables turned after Baron Sinister turned against Doom and betrayed his forces. Sinister also killed Baron Prior. When Thor Kors betrayed them, it was the final blow to Doom and his associates. Molecular Man, the source of Doom's power, gave his powers to Mr. Fantastic, and Battleworld fell apart. Apocalypse was seemingly dead, but it wasn't revealed exactly exactly what happened to him. Earth 58163 Earth 58163 was a reality created by Wanda Maximoff after she went crazy over the loss of her children. Showcased in 2005's Black Panther Volume 4, Issue 7, this version of Apocalypse had the same origin story as that of Earth 616, except that at some point he formed an alliance with Magneto and his Brotherhood of Mutants. A point of disapproval arose when Magneto wanted to spare the lives of humans, and Apocalypse was completely against it. The two fought, and Magneto emerged victorious, following which Apocalypse began working for him. However, Magneto changed his mind and declared war on humanity after a sentinel attacked their home base. Apocalypse continued serving him by freeing mutants from camps in exchange for control over North Africa. Later, at some point, Black Panther and Storm began growing close, and Magnus ordered Apocalypse to assassinate him. Apocalypse, Sabretooth, Iceman, Angel, and Nightcrawler arrived at Wakanda to kill Black Panther and were shocked to see Emperor Sunfire and Prince Namor assisting Black Panther. A battle broke off between the two sides, and when Apocalypse went in search of Black Panther inside his castle, he found Black Bolt waiting for him. Black Bolt whispered at him, and Apocalypse perished from the timeline. Ensabar Nur's powers were similar to what we're familiar with, except that he could shapeshift and adapt to different environments. Like being underwater, he developed gills to breathe. Earth 77995 We've previously discussed the reality of Earth 295, where Legion traveled back in time to kill Magneto before he could initiate the mutant supremacist movement. He ended up killing his father, Charles Xavier, following which Magneto began leading the X-Men in the path of Charles. Earth 77995 talks about another scenario where Legion was successful in killing Magneto. It was showcased in What If Issue 77, released in July 1995. In this reality, Magneto had just escaped a concentration camp along with his wife Magda and four other mutants, Storm, Iceman, Bishop, and Psylocke, when Legion arrived before him and killed him. This act led to a domino of events. Since Magneto was no more, there was no assistance for Charles decades later, for which Gabrielle Huller, Legion's mother, was dead before his birth, leading to no existence of Legion at all. Soon, Anora engulfed Legion, and the rest of the X-Men were sent to a state of coma. The Emkran Crystal resolved the paradox and reconstructed a reality without X-Men. In the new reality, the X-Men were celebrities, and the danger room in the X-Mansion was used to make movies. Apocalypse, in his reality, was a powerful figure with a group of followers known as the Followers of Apocalypse. With new recruits Gideon and Kandra, he attacked the X-Men in Washington, during which Charles Xavier confronted him. His powers could dampen Charles's attacks, and he was about to kill him before a Phoenix Force-empowered Cyclops arrived for his rescue. Jean Grey also stepped in, but her powers were no match for Apocalypse. With Jean buying some time, Scott tried taking Charles away, but was hit by Gideon's plasma rifle and dropped down. With no other option in hand, Charles used every last bit of his powers to finally break into Apocalypse's mind and stamp on it. The act led to the demise of both of them. Earth 
80521. Also known as the Age of Strife, Earth 80521 showcased an alternate future where a weakened apocalypse was attacked and seemingly killed by Strife and Bishop. In exchange for information about the Messiah Child, Bishop Strife took Strife to the year 2963 and together killed Apocalypse. However, as they left, Apocalypse was shown to be alive and hiding in a cave. He arrived in the future alongside X-Force and contacted one of his horsemen, Archangel. Archangel gave him a pair of wing blades that he came into contact with, which he rejuvenated. Apocalypse offered his services to Archangel and joined hands in killing Strife, who was then about to eradicate the X-Force. Once Apocalypse was taken into his celestial ship, he got back his might, and when Strife arrived, his powers were no match for him. Strife was easily defeated, and Apocalypse next laid his eyes on Hope. Archangel stopped Apocalypse from capturing Hope, and he left with Strife to make him his new host. Apocalypse experimented on Strife as the latter patiently waited for the right time to escape. Earth 93074 In the alternate reality of Earth 93074, Legion went back and killed both Magneto and Charles, along with many others. Soon, government bodies initiated the Sentinels program, which created a world where non-mutant superheroes survived. It was shown in What If Issue 11, released in December 2006. In this reality, the Apocalypse created an army of mutants who opposed the injustice inflicted upon mutants by humans. Once they were ready, Apocalypse unleashed them into the world, and soon there was no one left to oppose the mutants. There were slaughterhouses established where humans were executed by Apocalypse. Soon, Apocalypse became the ultimate power, forcing every mutant or human to either serve him or die. Namor expressed his allegiance to Apocalypse in exchange for peace, while the Fantastic four refused to serve and were killed. Only the Thing survived and carried on his struggle with the resistance against the Apocalypse. Apocalypse ruled for decades, and his forces successfully eradicated all mutant refugees, including Scott and Jean. Their son, Nate Summer, managed to escape with the assistance of Sauron and was later found freezing in Antarctica by Wolverine. He joined a group of superheroes who resisted Apocalypse and sought the help of Brother Voodoo, the new Sorcerer Supreme, after the death of Doctor Strange. They intended to go back in time and stop Apocalypse before his ascension. However, Voodoo explained that such a mission could bring dangers to the timeline, and hence they had to defeat Apocalypse in the present. Soon, a resistance team was formed under the leadership of Captain America, known as the Defenders. Within a month of its formation, they attacked Apocalypse's fortress in New York City. They were first confronted by the Holocaust and clones of Peter Parker, which cost them two of their members. Next, Voodoo opened a portal to bypass the defenses and arrived face to face with Apocalypse. The shortcut was through Domamu, and as he attacked, Voodoo stayed behind to buy them some time. Voodoo was, however, betrayed by Nate, who took away his eye of Agamotto. The rest of the team arrived at Apocalypse's temple, where they fought the Four Horsemen. Nate, being obsessed with killing Apocalypse, left with Molecular Man. With Owen's powers, Apocalypse was killed, but so was Molecular Man. Nate took hold of Apocalypse's armor and opened a portal to the past using the Eye of Agamotto. Captain America tried stopping him using Mjolnir, but it was futile. Nate left, but instead of arriving at the past of this reality, he arrived at another one. Earth 95169 Earth 95169 was the reality showcased in What If Issue 69, where Apocalypse's story differs from Earth 616 after he tried removing the techno-organic virus from Charles Xavier. When he failed and Professor X died, he tried to lead the X-Men, but the rest didn't want him. As a result, Apocalypse killed all of them with the help of Archangel, who Havoc then killed. Apocalypse later arrived at the Strife's base on the moon, taking back the leadership of the Dark Riders. The remaining X-Men and X-Force made an attempt to take on Apocalypse, but were defeated easily. The same happened when Cable attacked. Finally, Strife showed up and Apocalypse tried convincing him to join him, only to be denied. Strife attacked Apocalypse, and the two fought. It ended with Strife destroying Apocalypse and himself with Cable's time vortex machine. Earth TRN 756 We're all aware of Moira McTaggart's mutant ability to reset time upon her death. The reality of Earth TRN 756 was showcased as the ninth life of Moira. In all her previous lives, she'd failed to save mutant kind from the Sentinels, following which she planned to join the Apocalypse and succeed. Moira awoke Apocalypse when she was 18 and informed him about her past lives. Transforming Moira into an enhanced version with the help of the Celestial Seed, the two began waging war against humanity. Apocalypse, in the next two years, killed Magneto and Professor X, while Maria rescued the Horsemen of Apocalypse. Together, they formed the X-Men and enslaved Mr. Sinister. In the next 24 years, the Apocalypse eradicated most of humanity and the non-mutant superheroes. Later, when the first batch of Sentinels came online, Apocalypse fought them along with their leader, Nimrod. The fight continued for the next hundred years, and the mutants initially became victorious. He later devised a plan with Moira to defeat Nimrod, but Moira was mortally wounded after an attack on Apocalypse, resulting in her being confined to stasis. Later, Apocalypse and the X-Men infiltrated the man-machine supremacy Nexus to download information regarding Nimrod's origin. While in the process, Nimrod sensed their presence and attacked them. Apocalypse stayed to fight Nimrod and buy others time to escape. Apocalypse was seemingly killed by Nimrod, but his sacrifice didn't go in vain. The information about how Nimrod came online was uploaded into Moira's mind so that in her next life she could prevent Nimrod from coming online. 
Earth TRN 891, as shown in Free Comic Book Day 2020, X-Men Dark Ages Issue 1, the story of Earth TRN 891 was similar to that of Earth 616, except for the disaster caused by the Unmaker machine. Ten billion years ago, this machine was created to destroy black holes. During the process, the machine was corrupted, and it began attacking other galaxies. Apocalypse was intrigued by the reawakening of the machine before Doctor Strange used a powerful EMP and nearly destroyed the machine. However, the EMP couldn't be controlled, and it created a portal that devastated all technology in the world. Soon, war and chaos took over the world, and the Apocalypse took advantage of the situation and took control of Europe. He studied the Unmaker for years, and using Purple Man's mind-controlling abilities, he got geniuses Reed Richards, Riri Williams, and Tony Stark to help him reawaken it. Tony Stark created a sphere made of various metals to stop the EMP for an hour, which was the time required for Apocalypse to transfer his mind into the Unmaker. However, just as he was about to achieve his goals, a group of heroes arrived to stop him. Apocalypse sent his brainwashed prisoners to stop them. When that failed, he tried escaping into the Earth's core with the sphere, but thanks to Invisible Woman, he was stopped. Apocalypse was then vampirized by his ally Dracula, only to be later killed by Blade. Earth TRN 950 Earth TRN 950 was designated for the reality where Jubilee was born in her 10th life. This was showcased in X-Men 92, House of XCII Issue 1, released in April 2022. Jubilee decided to build a mutant nation on Krakoa with the help of Charles Xavier and Magneto. In this reality, Apocalypse joined the X-Men on the island of Krakoa and, together with Scarlet Witch, helped build the nation's defenses against magical incursions. Apocalypse was also one of the Inner Circle, the governing body of Krakoa, along with other influential mutants. When Arclight brought Forearm's corpse back from Polymarchus, there was a message given to him by Archon, the ruler of Polymarchus and conqueror of Arako. The message was a direct challenge to Krakoans, especially Apocalypse, to a crossing of swords challenge. Apocalypse, along with ten other mutants, accepted the challenge, but before Apocalypse could face Archon, the latter's wife and Apocalypse's former lover, Genesis decapitated him. Apocalypse and Genesis reunited and chose to be the king and queen of Polymarchus. Apocalypse left Krakoa and Madame Webb took his place in the inner circle. Earth TRN 992 Earth TRN 992 was showcased when Nightmare of Earth 616 made Charles Xavier experience this version of reality to break his spirit. It was showcased in X-Men Unlimited Infinity Comic issue 62, released in November 2022. In this reality, Charles was dead, following which Moira McTaggart and Magneto tried to keep his dream of achieving peaceful human and mutant coexistence alive. Meanwhile, the apocalypse of this reality was in his attempt to subdue the world and control it. He was joined by Alpha the Ultimate, who turned Magneto into a Toddler. Apocalypse next began twisting the world in his ideals, and it was Moira McTaggart who led the brave X-Men in resisting him. Later, Charles of Earth-616 manifested a dormant clone of his and, together with the X-Men, wiped out the minds of both Apocalypse and his ally, Mr. Sinister. Other versions In this section, we'll be talking about the various characters who took on the role of Apocalypse. Evan Sabarner. Evan Sabarner was introduced in Uncanny X-Force issue 7, released in April 2011. It all happened after Phantom X killed young Apocalypse in front of his team, but secretly gathered some of his blood for cloning. Phantom X next used the scientific facility shrunken down to the size of a palm, known as the world, to create a new Apocalypse. This new child was guarded by Ultimaten. The father almost figured out the secret, but thanks to Deadpool, the father was killed and the secret was kept safe. In the life simulation that the world provided, the young clone of Apocalypse was raised to be a good person with the name Evan. When Warren Washington ascended from being a horseman to replace Apocalypse, Phantom X released Evan to stop him. Calling himself Genesis, Evan fought Archangel and provided the window for Psylocke to attack him with the Life Seed. Evan was later sent to the Jean Grey School and he eventually fought alongside several heroes. Later, during a battle with Omega Red, when he thought of taking the villain down all by himself, he was impaled by Omega Red and killed. Evan's loss was mourned by everyone. Apocalypse Twins The Apocalypse Twins were showcased in the Dark Angel saga. Ichisumi, who was then the Horseman of Pestilence, conceived Archangel's heirs and later gave birth to twins Uriel and Demin. Despite being protected by Clan Akaba, they were kidnapped by Kang, who escaped with them into the time stream. The two faced the terrible atrocities of Kang, who sent them to mutant concentration camps and also forced Uriel to slash Emin's eye. The twins later reappeared in the modern era when Genocide, the son of Apocalypse, in hopes of receiving the Death Seed and replacing Archangel as Apocalypse, contacted a celestial gardener. Using the axe, Jan Bjorn and Uriel killed the gardener and, together with Emin, defeated Genocide's forces. The twin acquired the Death Seed and used it to resurrect Banshee, Grim Reaper, Dakin, and Banshee as the Four Horsemen of Death. 
that. The twins wanted revenge on Kang, and so wanted to destroy Earth and erase Kang's kingdom. They framed Earth for the death of the Celestial Gardener, for which Exitar, the Executioner, arrived on the planet to destroy it. Kang couldn't go to the past and stop the twins, as the process was inhibited owing to the Tachyon Dam. They contacted Scarlet Witch and asked her to assemble every mutant on Earth onto their Ark, which would ensure their survival. The survivors would then be taken to live peacefully on Planet X. Earth was destroyed, putting an end to humanity, while the mutants were taken to Planet X. However, Kang's Kronos core and did the victory, and it created another timeline, or Earth-13133. In this timeline, Kang and his Kronos core intervened in their plan and sent the Avengers Unity Division's minds back in time, bypassing the Tachyon Dam. In this new timeline, Exitar was killed. Kang attempted to steal the power of the Celestial. Havoc confronted him to stop him from doing so, while Sunfire absorbed the energy to destroy the twins and their art. Two of their horsemen remained, Darken and Grim Reaper, and were later shown to be returning to Earth the corpses of the twins. Archangel. Archangel at one point was one of the Horsemen of Apocalypse and later ascended to take the place of Apocalypse. It all happened after the death of the young Apocalypse. The Ascension Protocol inside the Death Seed that was planted in Warren got triggered after his death and he began becoming an essence of Apocalypse. When Warren went on to kill a reporter, the X-Force became alert. Under the direction of the Dark Beast, the X-Force traveled to the Age of Apocalypse and tried to prevent Archangel's ascension. They attempted to claim the Life Seed to destroy the Death Seed inside Warren. Unfortunately, Dark Beast revealed to be working for Archangel all along, and the remaining members of the X-Force returned to find Cavern X, overrun by Clan Akabar, led by Archangel. However, they managed to kill the final Horseman of Death, following which Archangel transformed Psylocke into the new Horseman. Betsy, who was freed by Jean Grey from the Age of Apocalypse, stabbed Archangel with the Celestial Life Seed, killing him and turning him into a new person. So we've finally come to the end of our video, and we hope you've liked our content. It can be inferred that in most cases of Apocalypse's defeat, he was seemingly dead but later reappeared some way or another. It seems that he could die permanently, and will always return to conquer the world and eradicate humanity. With that, we'll be ending today's video. Feel free to add your views about the character and mention your favourite iteration of Apocalypse. Thank you, and have a good one.